know what does what do you mean? I wanna know what does make America great again mean to you? Do you not feel like that's racist? Uh, what that stood for? No, I, I think that it just acknowledges that America used to be a great country and it's not anymore. And it just wants to be made great again. But that's racist. Okay, what about mass incarceration? Do you think that has any factor? Oh, we can get into uh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're not going to like this. I actually think we have an under-incarceration problem what the in this fuck country. Is your <laughs> So even when black Americans have that generational wealth you're talking about, it's not, it's not, well, I like to have research so I can come have these conversations. I'm not wrong, though. No, th no, this is from the Bureau of Justice Statistics, Bureau of Labor Statistics. So white people are incapable of honesty. We're misaligned with the reality. If we just get rid of everything and just look at the generational wealth that your family was allowed to pass down onto each other, not your family specifically, I mean the white man, so you don't think I'm talking directly about you. But it is. About but the white man, he's a white man, the amount right. of things that you guys were allowed to pass down that we don't have. Yeah. Like, we like that. That's what brought black people into the prison. The difference yes, sir. between black people not liking white people and white people not liking black people is if you're white and you're racist, you don't like me because I'm black. If I'm black and I don't like you because you're white, I don't like you because of my history. Because of my races rank each other. What we see is that white Americans rank themselves pretty much in the middle. Every other race also pretty much in the middle. But every other race, whether it's Hispanics, Asians, or blacks, all rank themselves the highest in terms of who they want to be around, and they all rank whites the lowest. I don't know why. Maybe we're just that off-putting. Everyone wants to be around a white person. Look at you right now. You all want to be around the white people. Okay. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yes. For the last couple of years, the United States has officially celebrated Juneteenth on June 19th, thanks to Joe Biden signing the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act in 2021, establishing the day as a federal holiday. And it commemorates the anniversary of the order by Major General Gordon Granger proclaiming freedom for enslaved people in Texas on June 19th, 1865. And this is actually the first federal holiday to be added to the calendar since the addition of Martin Luther King Jr. Day in 1983, which was another holiday meant to solidify the left-wing historiography that the glory of this country simply comes from its ability to liberate itself in all regards from the evil white men who built it. And I know a lot of well-meaning people think that Martin Luther King Jr. would just be appalled and completely against the actions and demands of the activist groups that claim to carry his torch today. But a study of the actual history of the civil rights movement and Martin Luther King Jr., the history which neither the right nor the left will touch, shows that things are playing out exactly as expected. And if you're interested in learning about it, I have a whole video on that as well. But the problem with Juneteenth isn't that it celebrates the anniversary of freeing enslaved people in Texas. Obviously, nobody supports slavery. That should go without saying. The problem is that the intent behind elevating this day to being a federal holiday is the same intent behind things like the 1619 Project, the Black National Anthem, Black Lives Matter, even our advertisements, which is to reorient the American historiography, the way that we understand and justify our own existence, history, and purpose to be about the perpetual struggle of oppressed minorities against the evil white men who have been oppressing them this whole time. That's not true. It's not even half true. It's not, well, sure, it's somewhat true, but the left is just taking it too far. That's a cop out. It's false. But if you're going to have a second Independence Day, a second national anthem, and a new history of America, which starts in 1619 instead of 1492, suggesting literally that the arrival of African slaves on the North American continent has been more consequential for the United States of America than the arrival of the European explorers in 1492, paving the way for the establishment of this country in the first place, then how could you expect this narrative to not reign, assuming that it's not already? The first step in dismantling this narrative is just speaking about it fully and honestly, which is why I decided to do a Change My Mind segment about it. Now, obviously, Steven Crowder came up with this idea. He's done tons of them all across the country. He's had huge success. I always wanted to do one, but I didn't want to take his thing out of respect. However, once popular liberal streamer Destiny started doing them, I figured the IP is pretty much public domain now, so I went ahead and threw my hat in the ring. But if you by chance haven't heard of Steven Crowder, literally the most popular conservative on YouTube, the credit goes to him. This is his idea, especially because it turns out that he actually did one with the same premise, and I just went ahead and didn't even notice until I'd already spent the money to produce this video. So on account of that, I would like to issue an official, my bad, bro. But if we're talking about race in America, I'm not just going to go to some college campus nearby and listen to a bunch of spoiled white liberal snowflakes tell me about oppression. So I traveled all the way across the country to what 30 seconds on Google told me is the best HBCU in the country to get the real answers. The results of just walking onto this HBCU campus with a sign simply declaring that America is not racist was students and people online calling for me to be killed, calling for me to be shot in the head, to be jumped, to be beaten, to be lit on fire, to be arrested and charged with a hate crime, people accusing me 
of domestic terrorism, etc., etc. One student posted on her Instagram story the description of what she called racist trash, which was that some white men came to campus and said that America isn't racist, that America doesn't lock up enough criminals, and that the only racism in America is from black people against white people. Well, that's not exactly what I said. It's interesting to me that she and her classmates would try to refute these bullet points by later telling me that it's literally unfair for me to be speaking to them, since I know more on the subject than they do, by threatening my life and by otherwise spewing viciously racist sentiment at me because I am white. This girl also did not seem to like that I used, quote, big words. Her follow-up post would lend more insight into the, uh, type of person she is, since below the reiterated list of our crimes, she mentions that she finds it ridiculous that her university, which is public, followed the laws pertaining to free speech on campus, but yet, when she and her roommates are in their apartment, they receive noise complaints for being too loud. So much for free speech. Remember this next time you're in a movie theater. It's just free speech, and if you don't like it, you can move to China. Another wrote that these whites have been getting really besides themselves lately. They need to realize we're not scared of them. And some places, they just need to not try that crazy stuff at. Keep that on their campus. Reasons we need to teach our black high schoolers the importance about going to an HBCU. Another said freedom of speech? This is a hate crime. They didn't understand why we were even allowed to set up in the first place. They said our font choice was evil. I thought it was playfully insensitive. They called us colonizers, as if that's an insult. White devils. Mayo monkey is somewhat self-explanatory, I suppose. Now, palm-colored people, I actually had to look this up. It says we're dangerous, which is so true. I mean, people notoriously avoid living in palm-colored people neighborhoods, cities, and countries due to their high prevalence of violent crime. Shaved monkeys? I am not shaved. I am hairy. Thank you. Now, a cave crawler, for those who don't know the more esoteric components of black history, is a white person because it was actually Africans who taught Europeans how to build civilizations, literally saving them from living in caves like Neanderthals. You learn things like this on black Twitter. Very fascinating stuff. And remember, evidence is like actually white supremacy. I mean, you must defer to the equally valid spoken word tradition of generational storytelling and lived experiences. Otherwise, you are literally Hitler. We recorded this back in February since it was Black History Month, and we figured that there would be no better time, place, and group of people for a discussion on racial politics than on that campus during that month, and in the days following, we received hundreds more death threats, racist messages, One of the more popular ones actually said that HBCUs shouldn't be a safe space for white people to carry on like this. In other words, if you're white and you exist on an HBCU campus, you cannot justly expect to preserve your safety if you choose to dissent from the predominant beliefs of the black students. That means you deserve violence. But what they really hated was at the end of it, a few of the black guys who were trying to actually have a conversation with us, they helped us carry the equipment back to our cars. And for doing so, they were called race traders, house slaves, coons, and Uncle Toms. So given all of the death threats and viciously racist sentiments I've received after the fact, you must be expecting to watch me conduct myself in an extremely disrespectful and hateful manner. As the video continues, I would like you to be thinking to yourself about all the backlash that we received and if our conduct actually warrants it. There's no way that that would be the response if I just sat down with a sign that reads America's not racist and invited people to speak with me, right? That's why I went to an HBCU for this discussion. I've noticed a lot of people like to have a safe version of this discussion by either hovering around the core of the topic or refusing to talk to actual black people about it. I'd like to provide a more accurate depiction of what these conversations should be and are like. My sign says that America is not racist because of course it isn't. It's not just that our laws or our institutions aren't racist. The whole country isn't racist. The people aren't, the culture isn't, the systems aren't. It literally does not exist. White Americans are statistically the least racist group of people on earth, and I'm tired of avoiding that fact because it might make people uncomfortable. The idea that the difference in group outcomes between white people and black people can be blamed on the individual or the collective actions of white people maneuvering against black people, which 
which for some reason can never be proved, that's absurd. The closest they've gotten to proving this is by showing that unconscious or implicit biases can exist, and from there they infer that, well, you know, this could translate into demonstrated patterns of behavior, but they never actually manifest into that demonstrated action. You would think, then, that there would be some more humility exercised in conversations about reparations, defunding the police, increased diversity quotas, affirmative action, etc., etc., but actually, if you even disagree with the root idea of all of those, that America at its core is racist, your life is threatened. Look at the language I use in this video. Conversation, dialogue, the scar of slavery. None of it seems to matter. That type of dynamic is simply unsustainable, and I think that's becoming more clear to people as the years pass. Everything you see now that is quote-unquote woke, that stems from this core idea, and until you attack it directly, you're only going to be buying yourself increasingly smaller windows of time. But enough with what I have to say. It's time to sit my white ass down and listen as we amplify black voices and put ourselves right at the center of a black experience in this tremendous Juneteenth celebration. That was the Partridge Family's Doesn't Somebody Want to Be Wanted, followed by Edison Lighthouse's Love Grows Where My Ro Here, uh, what's your name, sir? My name is Jerome. Well, nice to meet you. My name is John. Of course, the sign says America is not racist. Changed my mind. We're here for Black History Month. Just trying to have conversations. We spoke a little bit before we were recording. My position is essentially that America in its modern state is not racist uh, as a people, as an institution. Uh, any of the metrics by which you would try to measure that, I don't think it exists. And if it does exist, I would argue that it's actually racist systematically against white people. I think we see this in basically every institution, whether at a governmental level, uh, in academia. We see this in all sorts of different NGOs. And even as a people, I think that anti-white sentiment is very common now and it's sort of written off as nothing too serious. Um, I think it's even promoted in a lot of aspects. So I'm open to having my mind change. I know you are as well. So I'd just be curious to get your thoughts on my position and your position as well. Okay. So one, I don't really think my, my mind is going to be changed. And two, I have to let you understand that you do think that racism is affecting white people now. But literally, you're standing on the biggest HBCU, the, well, the biggest public HBCU, North Carolina A&T. And I feel like you failed to realize that this is a HBCU, and the HBCU was actually created in order for black people that were seeking education in order to have a safe environment where they don't have to worry about racism, where they don't have to worry about their skin complexion, where they don't have to worry about if their hairstyle is suited as unprofessional or not and i don't understand how you say that a lot of stuff is targeted towards white people when you guys made up these rules you guys wrote the constitution y'all didn't even include us y'all didn't see us as people when we first started off and now we are here at a hbcu having this debate I agree with a lot of that, but I mean, the Constitution was written in the 18th century. This school was probably established in the 19th century. So this was. 1991 to be exact. So this was hundreds of years ago. I don't understand how that would translate to now contemporary America. I fully acknowledge that those things happened in the past, but in terms of what is affecting black America now versus white America, I don't think that uh, white America is the culprit. So you don't think that white America is the culprit? Correct. Okay, I want to ask this again. Sure. So, you do not think that white America is the culprit? No, sir. Is that camera on? Yeah. So, what part are you not understanding? Uh, I don't think that white Americans are responsible for the position of black Americans. Okay, okay. Hey, bring that camera closer. Bring that camera closer. It's look. zoomed in on you. Okay, look, listen. He's saying system. He's saying institutionalized. I have to disagree 100%. HBCUs were created to help, I mean, to fight against racism inside of classrooms. Uh, if you want to talk about modern day, in 2012, I have to say 21% of people were more, 21% of African Americans were more likely to be shot by the cop just because of the whole Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman case. So, your idea of that racism does not exist now when I can really get pulled over by a cop right now, I go for my license and I just get shot and the only thing that they can say was, oh, I thought it was just a weapon. And all they get is a smack on the wrist and go on about your day. Mm -hmm. But if you was in that situation and you pulled out your ID and you got shot, they're doing a whole investigation and, my, and more than likely, he's probably gonna lose his job and he's gonna be serving time in jail. Mm -hmm. 
What's interesting about that, that's sort of anecdotal, is when you get into like the actual statistics on like by and large, what we see is that if you control for the likelihood of being arrested and also the crimes that they're being accused of, black Americans are not actually shot more likely than white Americans. And what's even interesting is if you look at the data for people who try to assault a police officer while they're being arrested, Black Americans are actually 40% less likely to be shot under those circumstances. So I don't think that's true. And also, if it is the fault of white people, why are black officers more likely to shoot black suspects than white officers are? Hispanics are also less likely to shoot black suspects than uh, black officers are. So I don't think that you can point the finger and say this is because of white people, when even when those things do happen, the black officers are the ones pulling the trigger. Okay, one, I will not deny that that happens, but two, I need to see the statistics before I just go off of what you have to say. So if you have a reliable source about the statistics, I yeah. will gladly shut up about that. But with that going forward, it's hard to it's hard to sit here and be like, oh, white people are hated on when you guys made the rules and you guys made all of these rules, even though it was way back in what, 18... The school was founded? No, 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 no. Not here. Not the school. I'm talking about everything like history. Uh, 18 what? When, no, 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 no. When was the Constitution written? 1787. 1787. So it's 2023. And a lot of those laws are still being used to this day. So can you can you also say so we can agree that modern that history is affecting the present? Do you agree or do you disagree? I agree. Or do you want me to go into more detail about that? I agree. I think that, if you don't mind, um, the con I mean, one of the most famous lines in the Constitution is this idea that all men are created equal, and our Supreme Court has solidified that with things like the Civil Rights Act to make that literally the law of the land. So there is no case now in contemporary America where black Americans are discriminated against at an institutional level compared to white Americans or any other wait, types wait, wait, of wait, Americans. Wait, did you say at, you said at an institutional level? Yeah. At an institutional level. Yes, sir. So you seem to keep wanting to pivot back to, you know, the founding of America, maybe being well, no, written no, no, such. No, I'm not trying what to, about I'm now? I'm not trying to pivot. I'm not trying to pivot. I'm trying to let you understand that stuff from the past tends to affect the future. How does it affect? That's what, that's what I'm confused on. How does that affect now? How does it affect it now? Yes, sir. Which parts? So how does the founding of America being perhaps disadvantageous to black Americans, how does that affect the position that you guys are in now 240 years later? Not understanding our culture, not understanding everything that comes behind us. A lot of black people are tent, a lot of black people can get rejected at a job just for a hairstyle. Mm -hmm. For me right now, I have, I have twists. I can show up to a job right now and I can get denied. Mm -hmm. Although I can meet every single requirement that they had and some. Yeah, yeah. Just off of a hairstyle. Crown rule. I mean, the Crown Act. Please look it up. Education is very important. And, and you talking about you talking about inside of classrooms, a lot of black people don't really go off to college unless it's a HBCU or if it's, you know, the first two years, they're doing it at a mid, they're doing it at a technical school and then they're transferring over. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us don't really even have the funds to even to even attend a college. Mm -hmm. And I'm blessed, I'm blessed to have that opportunity from my parents and a two-parent household. But you have to understand that a lot of stuff does stem from racism. What does the racism have to do with the lack of funding? I mean, in my opinion, I think that there's great opportunity for black Americans to attend schools all over the country. I mean, there are so many different grants and scholarship programs that are specifically for minority students or minority applicants that white students don't get to enjoy. And even we find that uh, black and brown students are more likely to get scholarships when they apply versus white students because of things like that. Or even we know that when equally qualified applicants apply to a school, black applicants are 20 times more likely to be accepted than equally qualified white students. Asians get a little bit uh, ticked down, I think five or 6% less likely, simply because of things like affirmative action and this idea of progress that we've been trying to uh, actualize throughout society. Um, and I, So I don't think it can be simply ascribed to black students aren't going to college because of racism. I think it's simply because of choices that are made within the black community that don't tend to result in that as an outcome. And what what kind of things are you talking about when you refer to uh, the black community? Uh, I think that if you look at the data, black students don't spend as much time doing homework when they're in school. Uh, they're not I as likely see that. to. I, I really want to. Hey, 
Does anybody got a phone that can pull up this guy's statistics? I'm not trying to be mean or anything. Can anybody pull up this guy's statistics? We'll put it on screen after, because if I say something wrong, I'm gonna I'm gonna get eaten alive. I will, uh, I will fix it. So no, 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 no. Just let it ride. Just let it ride. We don't need to be having that up in there. So uh, that is true, though. And in terms of time outside of school uh, spent doing homework, black people are much less likely to spend time doing homework than white students are. And so I think that that can translate to perhaps a, a, a lesser inclination to pursue higher education. I think that if a black student wants to go to college, they have every opportunity to do so, and even people are willing to give them advantages to pursuing that. I think it's simply a matter of them not wanting to pursue it for whatever reason. Well, one, you have to understand this. I have to, in order for me to keep on going off of these conversations, I would love to see the statistics. Mm -hmm. That's just me going forward. But at the same time, I can't comment on that. I can't comment on the the studying situation because I don't know if that's true or not for me to yeah. even react but if you're talking about the mistake I mean if you're talking about uh, how white people tend to get rejected more you got to look at the way the economy is set up now majority of white people are oversaturating each profession mm -hmm. from stem majors from well engineering doctors we need black people in those fields because that does not help that does not help out with broadening the variety of doctors mm -hmm. if you just have a bunch of white doctors then you don't really have white people I mean you don't really have people that can relate to their patients and although you talk about it from a biology perspective or anatomy perspective it still takes a black person to understand a black person same way with a Mexican person to understanding a black person because you understand the culture you understand what's more likely when it comes down to when it comes down to a patient or yeah. anything in that in that order I'm sorry it's getting windy um so I guess I would have two questions there one, there are a lot of programs to get specifically black students into medical school. For example, if you look at like MCAT scores, in order for a black student to get accepted into a high level medical school, they can have a significantly lower MCAT score, I think it's in like the 600s or something, uh, than can a white applicant or an Asian applicant. So there's that, it's a lot easier for them to get into that school. And then also, why is it better inherently? He's gonna verify my stats. You'll see. Yes, you'll I, see. No, I just, I just want to verify every no, I appreciate stat that. that you read out to me before. I just go off. I appreciate about that. It. And then, wouldn't you rather just have a good doctor? Why does it necessarily have to be a doctor that looks like you? If you think they're gonna be able to relate better to you, why not just have the best doctor? And if they happen to look like you, it is what it is. Why does that have to be a necessity to provide you better medical care? Oh, he was reading stats. Can you repeat the question again? Uh, yeah, the first question is, how can you argue that we are discouraging uh, minority doctors when to get into a high-level medical school, black applicants are allowed to have significantly lower MCAT scores than our white applicants or Asian applicants? I can find it. Yeah, just find it. But when you come but when it comes down to the medical field you have to understand this as well it's important to have a doctor from your cultural background because a lot of our stuff is, tends to be neglected when it comes down to doctors of other races it's the understanding it's the kind of like that yeah it's the understanding mm -hmm. like yeah of course they medically know everything but from an understanding point that's yeah, okay. So from 2013 to 2016 in the United States, you can see by the MCAT score and by race, it goes up as you get uh, darker complexion, I guess you would say. Wait, 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 where is that? Okay. Medical schools, acceptance rates by MCAT scores, GPA, race, and ethnicity. So, 24 so to 26. across all, I guess, uh, score breakdowns, whether it's their grade point average or their MCAT score, black applicants are significantly more likely to be accepted when they have lower scores, when they have medium scores, and when they have high scores especially. So I don't understand how you could know that and then argue that there is a, dis um, a disadvantage for black applicants pursuing uh, medicine or, or medical school or anything like that. Wait, hold on. 32, 30, 30 to 32, 3.6. Still ranked. We're ranked the highest. MCAT 27 to 29, 3.4 to 3.5 average, 81. We are 
Wait, is that his spent? That okay, that's black. That's black. That's black. Oh, no, 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 I'm just... I'm it's just, not about the yeah. stats. I know people are gonna say, oh, you needed to have all your sources and everything well, printed out right there to show everybody, and that way they would have listened to you, and I appreciate what that's saying. I appreciate where that's coming from. It's certainly well-meaning sentiment, but it's just naive. It's misguided. I mean, look at what happened here. Okay, fact check. Let's pull it up. We'll pull it up right now. We'll do it live. Turns out I'm right. I'm correct. Okay, well, now it's not about facts anymore. Now it's about understanding. And this happens so many more times throughout this discussion, as you'll see. And so, yeah, I mean, I link all the sources in the description if you're interested uh, in verifying the information, but I'm smart enough to know going into that that it wouldn't have made a difference. And quite honestly, I think the presence of the material itself is is almost bad faith in its own way because it's basically saying like, hey, look, I have an entire phone book of information about why I'm right and you're wrong. Come talk to me. Come sit down. Whereas I just have this information like in my head stored, which is because I've thought these things through already. It's indicative of that. It's not just like, okay, I'm trying to epically own people, so I'm going to aggregate as much facts and logic as possible if that makes sense. So again, I appreciate the idea behind that, but I guarantee you it would not have made that much of a difference if anything at all. If anything, actually, I think it would have made the conversation less productive. I know, like, y'all looking at the yeah. stat point of view, but... Oh, oh, no, he just had me down, like, he just had me down. Oh. I'm not, this is not my table. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, I'm just saying, um, I... Okay. I understand you're looking at the stats mm. point of view and how, like, there are higher levels within my, the Would you mind handing me that, actually? Your coffee? Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, but it's more of being black, like... It's true. Being black in America is hard and is we have to work harder to be seen as or be close to equivalent mm -hmm. to our white counterparts. So there was a sign. The sign fell. Uh, the sign read that America, the sign read that America is not racist. And I'm inviting people to have a conversation with me America as a country is not racist. As a country, as a people, uh, I just don't think we're racist. So do you think racism doesn't exist? Oh, I think it definitely exists. I think it's more likely to exist presently uh, in the form of like anti-white racism. Anti-white huh? anti huh? racism? <laughs> okay, wait, no, anti -white guys, don't racism. laugh, don't laugh. Everybody's entitled right, to their opinion. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, everybody, that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so oh, wait, I'm really if curious we just take it back to the furthest point of history, like to the, the beginning of America, hmm. what was our economy built on? Do you mind if I finish the conversation with him? No, no, and no, then no, we can no, get no. Into that. It's, a, it's a conversation for all of us. But I'm okay. Sorry, it's not like you in a lot of us. Sure. Was, what, was our, what was our economy built on? When black people were seen as three-fifths of a person, things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we were seen as chattel, not even real humans, what was that? That was That's the foundation yeah, of this cool. country. The forefathers, uh, every president, like not every president, but every president in the first like years of this country, right. it was built on the fact that black people were less than mm -hmm. even and i just came from history right now we just looked at the chart yeah we just looked at the chart where the white man was saying that the first level of like de a developed human was a white man then under that was asian people under that yeah. was the native american and then the black person was the lowest level mm -hmm. because they were not considered human so what is that? That is the foundation of this country. Right. And no matter how much we develop, no matter how far up we go, that is the foundation of this country. So how can something that we were built on not be what we are? Um, well, I think that what you're referring to, I mean, this country formally is only like 240 something years old, but I mean, the civilization's been here for like 600 something years. Uh, I don't think that the injustices of the past actually reflect and translate to the injustices that are the claimed now. Today? Such as what? Such as what? We do. I appreciate the democratized dialogue, but the idea was to kind of have a one on one so that we're not in a shouting match or all just trying to talk over each other. So, well, not shouting, but you know what I mean. It's just we've got like five or six different questions at once here. So I just I fail to see and I would love to know. I'm not coming at this in bad faith. How the injustices of America in its colonial days translate now to the disadvantageous position of black Americans in 2023. Well, sir, yeah. Did, how did you not get reparations? Sir, Here, may I? Have you ever heard the statement 40 acres and a mule? Yeah. And how that was taken away? Yeah. I don't understand how you can say that this country and the colonial days don't translation into today when we still follow the laws that were written back in, back when. And I mean, they've changed and they've gotten better. Yeah. But if we just get rid of all that, forget the laws, forget everything, let's just talk about the how many years of a head start that white people got when our people were working to make wealth for your families that your families passed on to each other mm. and then we were given freedom and then we were just given like okay well now we all are, are free 
we all can work and we all can do this. Why aren't you doing what we're doing? Yeah. But the things that you guys had, the houses, the money, all the stuff that you guys were able to inherit from your grandparents, our grandparents couldn't give that to us. The only thing our grandparents could give us was songs and stories. Yeah. We didn't have the money that you guys Did received. Did you know that they paid the slave master once all, they freed even, all the slaves? Even, right. when yeah. that, even when slavery was abolished, the way that mass incarceration was used to right. reinstate slavery, right. and then when it was like they had, they had to pay, they had all these. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really hard. I'm kind of pissed off right now because this is happening during Black History Month, so excuse that I can't talk. <laughs> what better time, though, but, right? No. 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 I feel like everybody should back up from the table. But I just feel like you can't say that what happened in colonial days and even after colonial days doesn't translate into today mm -hmm. because it is all a domino effect. Right. If we just look at, if we just get rid of everything and just look at the generational wealth that your family was allowed to pass down onto each other, not your family specifically, I mean the white man, so you don't think I'm talking directly about you. But it is. About but the white man, he's a white man, the amount right. of things that you guys were allowed to pass down that we don't have, and a lot of black people that have wealth right now, they actually had to work for that. A lot yeah. of white people that have wealth right now, their parents were able to give them just Donald Trump, for example, the million dollar right. head start. Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about MCAT, all that stuff. Even when black people get the degrees that they have and they are let into schools easier because they're black, when they get out into that job field, exactly. what white man at a top company is going to say, yeah, let me hire this black person. Otherwise, beyond the fact of having a token black person so their company looks diverse, mm -hmm. the only right. reason they hire black people nowadays is because they want to look like, oh, I'm not racist, by diversity hire. So there's a lot there. Uh, the first thing I want to mention, just before I forget, you mentioned reparations, for example. Yeah, it is still right. Money. It is true that there's never been a program that has specifically said, "Here is a cash voucher for the experience of your ancestors during slavery." However, if you look at who pays the most into the tax system in this country historically, it has been uh, white Americans and also Asian Americans. Mm -hmm. And Sorry, excuse me. And if you look, I know we got to go one at a time, though. And if you look at who has taken more out of the system, it has been Black Americans. And we've spent over a trillion dollars since the 1960s on the war on poverty which disproportionately has gone to black Americans so in a way that has been reparations you also mentioned um, before I forget the uh, the corporate America I think there was a report done by uh, the S&P or on the S&P 100 and it found that something like 75% of the S&P 100 companies all have initiated some form of program to hire specifically minority applicants and you know they're looking to get but that's happening now so my point is what you're talking about is you know a black black applicant going to a job and being discriminated against because of their race, the opposite is happening. They're being prioritized because of, yeah. because of their race. Well, and you might say, well, they want to have a token. They're still getting that job. They're still getting money. Okay. Talking about affirmative yeah. action. Do you mind if I hit on the generational wealth thing and then I'll let you talk again just because you made that point? Um, I don't think that... Uh, yeah, that's true. It's, it's tough to capture all this. Are you all together? What, what group is yeah, this? What is, what is this? this? We're just going to post this on YouTube. Uh, oh, my name? Just for so it's a conversation and more people can see the conversation. Yeah. My, name is, my name is John Zoyle. Just me. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Zoyle. It's just my name on YouTube, yeah. I can appreciate the fact that you're trying to open up a conversation about it. Because a lot of people... Uh, that are like you guys don't actually want to talk but just back to the point where you said certain companies open up co um, organizations and stuff so that they can hire black people or just people of specific like minorities yeah they have to do that because they don't want to look racist as soon as a company is posted on instagram tiktok in this day and age saying oh you guys only have white people you guys only hire straight people all that stuff they're going to get canceled they're not doing doesn't that, that, that prove that the power is on your side though no, no. no. Sorry, so wait, sorry. We as a as a as a generation, we are all into the emotions and stuff like it. But let's keep it real. The money is where the power is. And if you are the one that's distributing the money and you're the one giving the jobs, you're gonna always have the power. Well, that's where it is. But the workforce, we have to dress I gotta go because I'm really hungry. Right, it was nice speaking with you. Find a stopping point. Real. Get everybody back up. There. All right. We are gonna. You're gonna take off. Yeah. All right, man. It was really nice talking to you. I appreciate you sitting down, being our inaugural it was one. Nice having a conversation with you. Yes, sir. Until that last part, I'm not gonna host. You. All right, man. It is what it is. I really. So if one of you guys wants to sit down, we do want to try to keep it like individual, just because it's tough to capture all this and. Yeah. Um, my friend is here. Thank you. Sure, we'll be here. Uh, we'll be here until three o'clock. So, if you guys want to hang out or sit down, 
Whoever, would you like to? I really want to get your view on. Wait, whoa, whoa, what did she want to get my view on? You get to find out right now, but first, look, you know how much I love iTarget. I've said it a million times, and if you have one, I'm about to take you to the next level. If not, this new product is gonna be something that you have to get. Have you ever seen competitive shooters practice timing drills on the range? Imagine being able to do that in your own home, anytime you want, never spending a dime on ammo. That's what the new iTarget Cube does. The iTarget Cube is fully compatible with your existing laser bullets, you can buy one or upgrade to the three pack for a truly unique training experience, compete with friends, practice clearing drills, or use random mode to test your ability to react, all while the system times every shot that you take. Right now, save 10% plus free shipping with the offer code DOYLE when you go to itargetpro.com. iTarget Pro comes in most calibers from 9mm to 223, so you can train with almost any firearm. This is the easiest and most cost effective way to train, and it pays for itself in a single day. Get your dad one late for Father's Day. He won't care. He's your dad. Get one for you and the boys for white boy summer. There's like two skills more important for you to have as a man than marksmanship. If you want to develop good marksmanship, this is the easiest way to build that foundation. That's the letter I target pro I target pro.com offer code Doyle. Very epic. We continue. I just want, I had, yeah, you mentioned something about, uh, I don't know hundred percent what you said. I don't want to get it wrong. Do you mind if I ask your name? Alaric. My name is John. Nice, nice to meet you. you. America is not racist. True. Real. No, that's a lie. No, and it's that's so true. I Well, that is true, and I, I would love to hear uh, this young lady's opinion as well. So, just to sort of reiterate, uh, I have a sign here It reads, America's not racist, change my mind. I'm, of course, open to having my mind changed, but I don't believe that America's racist at an institutional level. I don't believe American people are racist, and uh, I would just be curious to get your thoughts on that. Okay. Um, well, I feel like... Explaining my thoughts on it wouldn't actually do you any well because I feel like you already have an a, I, idea that you're going to stick with. But for I have a question for you yep. since we were just talking. You mentioned that um, you feel that it's actually we're racist to white people. Yeah. I know you didn't say that exactly, but that's. I just wanted to know your your ideas on that. Sure. So racism as a word. I know that the definition, some people say it's prejudice, some people it's power plus prejudice. Uh, are you familiar with the concept of like an in-group preference? So like a, this is this trend in psychology that we tend to see where people of different races all demonstrate an in-group preference, meaning if you poll 100 Hispanic people on who they want to be around, on average they're going to tend to want to be around Hispanic people more, black people have the same, white people have the same. But if you look at the data and quantify this, what we see is that black Americans actually have the highest in-group preference, meaning you guys want to stick together the most. And I'm going to post it all in the video if you watch it. I don't. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that, but anyway, but it is true. I'll get eaten alive if I get something wrong, so it is true. But if you look at white Americans, they actually have the lowest level of in-group preference, meaning white people, especially white liberals, actually prefer to be around people of other races rather than their own. White conservatives do demonstrate a small in-group preference, but in terms of all the races, white people tend to have the smallest and black people tend to have the largest. Moreover, if you look at how different races rank each other, what we see is that white Americans rank themselves pretty much in the middle, every other race also pretty much in the middle, but every other race, whether it's Hispanics, Asians, or black, all rank themselves the highest in terms of who they want to be around and they all rank whites the lowest. I don't know why, maybe we're just that off-putting. Everyone wants to be around a white person. Look at you right now, you all want to be around the white people. Okay, I appreciate that, I appreciate that, yes. So you think? Okay. And that's okay. a good point. That's a good point. So you, you guys make great music. You think yeah. we're being racist to white people? Excuse me. Music is a microaggression. The no, but I mean, the most popular music in this country, whether it's now or even dating back to Everything rock music, has all been influenced by black people. So you Sorry. think, so you think, um, racism for white, it, we're racist to white people because we don't want to be around you. You think that's what racism is? I think that's part of it. Um, but I, I think if we're talking about racism just at the most individual level, I think that's true. But then if you expand even to the way this country works, there are lots of disadvantages written into the law to discriminate against white men in terms of getting into college, getting jobs, and the opposite is given to minorities, specifically black applicants, whether it's in the workforce or in academia, uh -huh. and a, those have been written into the law, which maybe you agree with because you think that's necessary to correct disparities of days past, but in terms of 2023 America, right now, it is easier to achieve success as a non-white person, specifically, uh, or yeah, non-white person than a white man. 
Okay. Yes, ma'am. I feel like, though, like, you know the reason why we have Well, let's, okay, so, like, you know, let's say, let's do an example. Let's say, like, let's use love, for example. This African-American graduated and a white person graduated. They go for the same job. I feel like, for example, you would get the job more than a black person would because... Statistically, that's not true. Statistically, okay. the black... Like, if, are you? If they're equally qualified, the black person will get the but job. But you get paid more, though, if you want to be honest, because yes. your skin tone. That's also oh, not okay, true. But no, I, I, if you look, okay, but if you look... If you look at these schools, the ones where you're saying that um, black people are getting a, uh, admitted to more mm -hmm. easier, they're still majority white schools. Mm -hmm. wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be good? Um, why, why do you feel like that would be good? Because they're getting into college. What does it matter if they're majority white? Because, okay, they're still admitting, yes, they're still admitting black people mm -hmm. to these schools, but there's still a lot of white people who are getting into these schools. Yeah. So you're still, you just say white people are not getting into schools. How is that the case if it's still majority white people in these schools? Well, I think, I think proportions matter because it is like it's still a majority white country. And so if you have, you know, black Americans who are 13% of the population at a lot of these schools relative to their merit, meaning how their scores are, how their grades are, they are more likely to get accepted into these elite institutions. And if you look at the group that is the least likely based purely on merit, it's actually white Americans. And interesting, you guys might have been following this recently with the Supreme Court dealing with affirmative action, one of the things that was brought up by one of the attorneys, which is now on record, which I thought was really interesting, was somebody asked, well, why do you have to take race into account when you're admitting students? Why not just take into account socioeconomic factors? And what they found is that, and they said this, they can't do that because when they do that, it ends up favoring disproportionately white people, which means that if you look at, you know, kids who are... No, I'm just saying that if you look at kids who are in poor economic circumstances, who are then applying to these schools, they can't just give a leg up to kids who are poor because then if you're looking at merit by itself, the white students still tend to perform better. And so that's why they have to specifically take race into account. I don't think we have better education. Okay, but if you want to talk about better education, okay, we already know that blacks, whites, they all tend to live in the same area, right? Okay, so, and the way they pay for school is by taxes from the, your area. Yeah. So, people in, normally, in like black schools, Hispanic schools, their schools are going to be, not, aren't as good as if you go to a area with white school. I'm not even talking about private schools, I'm talking about regular yeah. schools the white areas are going to have better education and stuff like that. Yeah. You don't see the disadvantage there already? Um, I don't understand what that has to do with racism, no. Why do you think the whole I would, I would imagine that it's probably because the black areas tend to generate less tax revenue to go. So why is that because of racism, though? I'll give you an example. If you look at funding that are, is going from the federal level or the state level to these schools, black students actually per pupil receive 1% greater funding than white students for education. So if you guys are receiving greater education funding, how can you argue that the education? So we, we gotta, so we're pivoting from education to economics. We gotta stick on at least one thing. We also know, we also know, we also know with education, black students tend to go to schools that hire uh, teachers with better qualifications. They have a smaller class size on average. So by any metric that you would try to measure a uh, successful school, other than test scores, you would see that black schools actually tend to be better in this case. So I don't understand how it's because of racism. Oh. Why is it smaller though? Because we're labeled that we're the bad school. That everybody but, there doesn't this, really know. Why I don't think, think that's true. Okay. About that, the reparations that you mentioned earlier, is this what you're talking about? Right now, the right, way that we get more funding for schools. That no, that no. I mean, the reparations and welfare payments. But do white people not also receive welfare? Uh, it's disproportionately. But because they, yes, they do. Why do you? But because white people don't need welfare. Why? Uh, well, I don't think that's true either. Okay, I have a question for you. I don't think that's true. Can I ask you a question, yes. please? Yes. Um, so I just want to know your thoughts. What do you think racism is? Uh, I think, as I described earlier, I think racism is basically in-group preference. Um, I think it's that's prejudice. You've never experienced that, so obviously. I th that's not true. You, you, what's, what's yeah. Yeah, I've experienced racism as a white man in America. Think about it. Yeah, I can. Sure. Again, we're, we're going to have to keep this more individualized, otherwise we're not going to be able to be productive.
the difference yes, sir. between black people not liking white people and white people not liking black people is if you're white and you're racist, you don't like me because I'm black. If I'm black and I don't like you because you're white, I don't like you because of my history with white people and because of my ancestors. Like this shit is in our I don't think that's true. That is true. We don't like white people because of how they treated us. Like because of what we see in the history books. Every time you open a history book and there's a black person in it, there's always something about what a white person did. That's all we see. White people who don't like me don't like me because I'm black. I'm not. They don't say. They can't say that I'm loud. They can't say that I, I commit crimes. I don't do any of that. I literally yeah. stick to. I say to myself when I go to lunch. Black people they don't that easily turn in. Get up! Get up! Okay, so do you think? I'm sorry. <laughs> do you think that um like historically like redlining and um like how it was hard for even when slaves were um free they couldn't they had troubles getting schooling mm. like you, they couldn't go to college they had all these things they, that they had to do. Yeah. Do you think that like that doesn't play into it at all? I don't, and and I'll explain why. Uh, there was research done that compared the descendants of children who were born to freed blacks and children who were born to slaves. And what they found, as you would expect, is children who were born to parents who were uh, freed slaves were less likely to be able to get jobs, to obtain education, to obtain wealth. But what they found is after two to three generations, those descendants pretty much matched up in terms of their ability to have wealth, to get jobs. So what we see is... What about compared to white, to white people? White people were still better off, yeah. And why, why is that? Is it because they started off better off? Because they already had the education? like? People weren't burning down their schools when they yeah. were trying to build these colleges and stuff for them. Like the wealth that they've had from slavery and stuff, mm -hmm. and already the education, that's passed down already. Yeah. So basically, we had to start over. Mm -hmm. Well, we had to start from the bottom. They were already up here yeah. and to catch up. Would you say, in your opinion, we have caught up yet? I don't think so, but I do and think it's true that generational wealth doesn't really translate well between generations. Like, if you look even between, like, white Americans with generational wealth, if you take, like, a white person who's in the top 20% of income, that person is relatively likely to stay there. But if you take, like, a black person who was born into the top 20% of income, for whatever reason, that black person has an equally likely chance of slipping into the bottom 20% as they do remaining in the top 20%. So even when black Americans have that generational wealth you're talking about, it's it's not, it's not, well, I like to have research so I can come have these conversations. I don't what's your point? I'm not wrong, though. No, th no, this is from the Bureau of Justice Statistics, Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, so white people are incapable of honesty. We're misaligned with the reality. Yes! It's all the history books are lies. They don't even tell, like, the real type shit. I agree with that. I do agree with that. Black history teacher, I did not know half of this shit. Sorry? Is the history books lies you agree? What specifically do you agree with? Them? In history? Yes. I believe that America is fundamentally like the greatest country in the world. Why do you, wait, why wait, do you wait, believe wait, that? Wait, wait. Why do you believe that? Yeah. Why uh, do you believe that? Well, I think that. history brings that. Yeah. What? What's? What's the? Well, so great about it. Was it the slavery? Was it the killing of innocent black people? It was not. Uh, do you mind if I? Really quick, just about the slavery thing. You know that America wasn't the country that invented slavery. Oh, we right? invented chattel slavery. Everybody America invented chattel slavery. We invented chattel slavery. The chattel slavery wasn't invented America. Just because they invented it doesn't make sense. All the other slavery throughout the Caribbean. Listen, all the other countries had the method of slavery. Everybody had the domestic slavery. Yeah. You know, different slavery. We had slavery to where like you tear down black people, basically like right. a genocide in a way. Right. So those. You don't think that's bad? And that's not the only like, thing they've done to bad. just our people. I got next. Those slave routes weren't invented by Americans. The slave routes were capitalized on. So let me let me just make sure we understand here, because oftentimes I know that this is like kind of dispelled throughout history. We arrived on African land and purchased slaves that were already enslaved by warring African tribes. We know that, right? It's not like roots where we were going into the jungle and they were bringing them over. Right, right. That was slavery by tribal warfare. Here, people within the Americas were literal property. Within African slavery, that was slavery by prisoners of war, by tribal warfare. Is that a better kind of slavery? No. I mean, Okay, to me, to me it sounds like you're trying to justify that fact. Oh, no. you can actually, well, that's what it sounds like. Well, what I meant with our conversation was, I don't think it's, if I may, I don't think it's fair to 
condemn America for slavery, when even in terms of the Western Hemisphere, most of the slaves that were coming from Africa were going to South America. We got like a fraction of them, and we also fought a war where all of that generational wealth that you're referring to in the South was set to zero. 600,000 white people died to free black slaves. And I'm sorry. First off, that the war that you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. But sir, it doesn't really matter if America's part was big or small. Okay, they had a part in it. I have a question. Yeah. Because the war you're referring to, it wasn't actually two free slaves. One is more about money. And second off, if, if it really was about freeing slaves, why do we have the Jim Crow laws and all that exactly. afterwards? Yeah. And it was never, yeah, it was never about freeing slaves. It was not. I agree with that, actually. But it is true. say that America wasn't the only one with slaves and America had a small part. Slaves in Africa, after they committed, after they did their time, they were allowed to assimilate back into African society because they were still people. And also, slavery in America was not based on the color of your skin. It was based on what you were born into. When you got to America, that's when they start whipping you and start making you don't have any rights. You're right, because there were white slaves in America as well. They were, they were actually treated worse, like indentured they were servitudes. Like, yeah. they were they were not not slaves. They were indentured servants. Worse. And they were actually treated worse in many cases than no, slaves no, were. Yes, they, they were. No, they were indentured so, servants, not slaves. You, the difference in names means everything right there. Listen, can I say something? Yeah. When a white person was to rape a black person and they were to have a baby, you usually would follow um, the dad. So if the dad was white and you rape a black woman, your child would be free. In America, they changed that law so that you follow the mom so that the child would still be enslaved. That is racist. Yeah. Like, that just proves that you're racist. And I, I hear what you're saying, but we're talking about something that happened hundreds of years ago. No, but I haven't heard how it's demonstrated. I have a question for you, How it's demanded. demonstrated today? Yeah, how, how it is translated. Into our law system. Why? Yeah. I know how it's why, translated. Why are you, are you why did you choose this campus? I'll yeah, I'll tell you. you exactly. Ask ask questions. Questions. Well, yeah. Obviously, he's here to try to rile us up to make us exactly. So then, why so are you, you never engaging with what he's doing, doing right now? They're about to go and post. I, yes, I know, but I want to hear you. No, I appreciate that. They're going to post your face on social media. They're going to come and post all these people that are upset about it. I wanted to have a conversation. I don't think America's racist yet. Why are you saying you? Do we want white people speaking for us or do we want black people speaking for us? At the end of the day, why are we explaining this? This right here is provocation. These, they set up shot here so you have to come around and gather around and put their cameras in your face. So like, do you think this is right to like be here and do this? Yeah. It's not even about what's right or wrong. Oh, nice talking to you as well. We got into this weird exchange about chattel slavery, which they said white people invented, and which they said was worse than African slavery, where you're enslaved by a tribe you're warring with, because at least in that case, you have a greater chance of being free. Not sure how that squares with POWs and slaves just being killed once they're no longer needed, or being castrated and sent east, which is why they don't have African populations uh, over there like we have here in the Western Hemisphere. Just a very bizarre line of argument. I thought, like, yeah, you know, obviously all slavery is bad, but if I'm a slave, I'd rather be considered property than just a prisoner because then there's an incentive to keep me alive because I can be traded, I can be sold, etc. But if I'm a prisoner, I can just be killed when I'm no longer useful, when there's suspicion of mutiny as revenge since we're at war, whatever, which is exactly what happened, by the way. And again, I'm not excusing any components of slavery, but if we can just be adults for a second and speak candidly about things, I think we'd all be better off. Um, and the point on the racism definition, which I wish we got to expand on, was to say, what most woke people would define as racism isn't actually racism. They're just trying to pathologize in-group preference. I'm comfortable with racism being defined as prejudice based on race, but with that definition, we see that white people are actually the least racist and black people are the most racist. Surveys, blind jury studies, etc. But of course it gets to a point now where I'm supposed to justify my existence being there because we can't just have a conversation. They want to question and attack my sources, question and attack me. And what's interesting is that there are a lot of instances where there's a point that's disproved and sometimes they even concede that and then they just immediately try to pivot to something else. It's like, this is true. No, it's not. Well, yeah, but that's because of this. That's not true either. Well, yeah, but that's because of this, et cetera, et cetera. Moreover, when they say racist things, not liking white people, the violent backlash on social media, nobody spoke up. Only a few students were like, hey, chill out. The rest just went along with it, even if not instigating directly themselves. Just an interesting observation. What was your name? John. Nice to meet you. 
Uh, you know my position, I, I imagine. I'd be curious to get your thoughts. Well, I, want, I just want to ask you some questions sure. first because I've seen the ladder with powder bottles before. Right? So I've seen what kind of goes into what y'all are doing there. No, I'm not going to tell you that. I don't think that's a good idea. Look. I mean, I just don't think that's a good idea. No, I mean, we got private security there. Don't do it. Look, here's it. Because, bro. Hear me out, hear me out. If you do that, you're gonna make them look bad and they're gonna get mad at me. So like, like the people talking. Don't, you know what I mean, the people talking. Uh, I just have a YouTube channel. My name is John Doyle. I upload this stuff on YouTube. What is your YouTube channel? The name is John Doyle. Okay, what is it about? I just, I talk about politics. Uh, okay. I'm conservative, obviously, and you can probably ascertain. So, uh, yeah, I just talk about like politics. You're, like, you're not coming in, like you said, to not assume anything. I'm not assuming anything about you. So I appreciate that. Why do you come to an HBC to talk about politics? Well, I'm talking specifically about racial politics, and my thinking, which maybe was misguided, I thought it would be better to talk about racial politics at an HBCU than just an average college campus. I thought that it would be better to get the perspective of black Americans than it would be to talk to a bunch of like white liberal students about what they think about racism. Uh, I'm being told that this was insensitive and misguided, so I, I've learned something, but I, I think that my intention was at least good. Why do you come to us to talk about politics? Well, because I want to get your opinion. But politics is very broad, as you know, so about what? Racial politics, because I think there's a huge discussion right now about racism. It's been going on for a while, and typically the accusation is that America, white people are, whether they know it or not, oppressing non-white people, and particularly black people, largely because of our shared history in this country. And I just think it's important to have a conversation about that. Okay, would you say that there's a difference between what people say and what, what they mean? Sure. Okay, so when people say white people are being oppressive, do you think they mean that in institutions in America are oppressing them? Do you think that's Sometimes, I think that's what they mean, yeah. Okay, so if you know that's what they mean, why do you charge it against them that they think it's to you specifically? Because we know you're not here to oppress us, per se, right? Well, I would hope not. Um, well, I think that I'm still in some way culpable as a white person. For example, like if reparations were uh, imposed, that is something that would come out of my pocket to go towards black America. So that does in some way affect me. Also, a lot of the policies that we mentioned earlier in terms of giving priority to black applicants instead of white applicants, things like that, that does affect me in some way. It affects my friends, my family. So I think it's worth talking about. Okay, but, you, but when, you ask, yeah. like, when you talk about I just that, told you. Wait, hold on, hold on. When you ask that question, you assume that all of us agree that we should get reparations. So because we're black, that doesn't mean we all agree with the same thing. Yeah. So my point in talking to you is that while we all are black people here, we don't have all the same ideas. Yeah. Just like white liberals may not always have the same ideas. I agree. I, the reason I said that was because I think in, in the polling, one of the more popular issues among black Americans is the idea of reparations. Uh, I don't think that's universal, but it is very popular amongst like the black blo the, the black block vote. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think that I, I think that black Americans probably feel like that would heal some of the scar caused by slavery. I think that black Americans, and correct me if this is inaccurate, I think they probably feel like that amount of money and whatever amount that is would probably help give them an advantage to where they could maybe close the gap in terms of material standard of living between black Americans and white Americans. Okay, so using what your words, you said the scar of slavery. So yeah. you believe there is a scar of slavery. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think that is? Uh, I, I think I know it when I see it. I mean, I think that there's a lot of hurt in this country because of the legacy of slavery. Uh, I think that black America, and I don't think the media, by the way, helps with this at all. I think that black America looks at white America and vice versa as this sort of like maybe uh, divorced parents trying their best to get along. And I think that uh, there's a lot of hurt and it needs to be discussed. So. I think that it's probably accurate to say that black Americans don't really feel like they have a stake in America. Would that be inaccurate? How do you know, how can you say black people feel? Well, you asked me what I think, and this is just what I think. I don't know if it's true. I'm asking an example of a scar of America, and you talk about how black people feel. Yeah. I'm trying to find a correlation there. Well, I think that, it, you know, because black Americans are Americans, that would affect our general social fabric if they feel like they don't have a stake in society or that this country isn't theirs for some reason. Why would they feel like that? 
because of slavery. Okay, but how does slavery affect today? I agree. I don't think slavery does affect today beyond that. You don't? No, ma'am. Okay, do you think um, the American Revolution affects today? Uh, in the sense that it established this nation independently from Great Britain, yes. Do you think the, the economic system of slavery helped to establish America? Do you think that? In a certain sense, I think that largely what we see now is because we were the only industrial economy left on the global stage after World War II. Um, I think that our culture was pretty well solidified by then, but I don't think it's entirely because of slavery. I didn't say entirely. I just said, do you think that contributes? Because the American Revolution was part of the American slavery, right? I think it contributed insignificantly. Okay, what about mass incarceration? Do you think that has any factor? Oh, we could get into uh, that. Yeah, yeah, because you're not going to like this. I actually think we have an under-incarceration problem what in this the fuck country. Is may I ask you, what, may I ask you, why do you think that? Because relative to the rate of violent crimes committed in this country, if you look at that number versus the amount of people we have, it's less than what it should be. Also, if you, like any article, and this is anecdotal, every time I read an article about some person being murdered, I read, excuse me, I read the description of the offender, and it's always that this person was in jail for something and they were released. So I think we have a problem where you have, frankly, liberal district attorneys refusing to prosecute crimes, uh, refusing to sentence for the proper amount for the crimes, and so we see a high rate of repeat offenders because we just don't keep these people locked in prison. Okay, so with repeat offenders, are there yeah. more people in prison for violent crimes or for minor crimes? Or definitely violent crimes. Wait, do you know about the American By far. Do you know about the American legislature? Of exchange council? I do not. Okay, it's a council. Real. It's a council that's made up of private sectors, like or big organizations like Walmart used to be a part of it. State Farm is still a part of it. Many organizations have dropped because they're known to be a secret, secretive organization that builds legislation and laws. Mm -hmm. And they are also made up of Republican representatives, state representatives that go to the House. They formulate these laws and present them in front of court. Yeah. One time they even got caught with their letterhead still on the paper that they were trying to promote the legislation. Alec is known for creating the stop and frisk tactics <laughs> that was implemented to incarcerate the now known as the Exonerated Five in New York City. Mm. Yusuf Salam, Corey Wise, Raymond Santana, all of them. We can keep one. That's one. And that was meant to fuel black people into American prisons. And I'm only saying that because one of Alex's main contra like, contributors yeah. was a, the first private prison industry. Mm -hmm. And the people who are also a part of Alex make their phones that go in the prisons that get money from prisoners who do modern day slavery that you say still doesn't affect society today. I think it does affect society, but again, you're not going to like this. I, well, I think that the prison system affects society in the sense that it doesn't do its no, job well I enough. Race, I, I meant slavery. Yeah. Yeah, but do you not think that the work that happens in prisons today are, can be considered modern day slavery? I, I would be sympathetic to that, yeah. Okay, so it still affects us today, correct? Yeah. Okay, and it affects black people today, correct? Because all of those are fueled behind racist agendas. Wouldn't that be after they commit a violent crime and go to prison, though? Um, Exonerated Five, they create... They, I mean, but that's one example, right? There's many examples. That's just one of them. Right, but you... Khalid Browder, he killed himself after he got released from prison for a crime he didn't commit. And he was sitting in Rikers for all those years yeah. because he couldn't get a court date. That's, yeah, and that's terrible, and I think that's very wrong. But in terms of... on. that affects... I, I think that those two examples don't uh, don't outweigh the like thousands okay, of examples. I'm just saying, but why, but why, I'm, just, I'm just saying that's two in a million. Right. But what? Well, the million that, million. but the million that we know from the data that we aggregate Millions. would point to the opposite. And what data? Where is this coming from? And even uh, the FBI, you don't know, the Department of Justice. Okay, can you show us that? I, I don't have my binder of statistics. Okay, I don't. You want to talk about you the stuff that doesn't get recorded? Come here. The stuff and, that doesn't get recorded, wait, like body cams. Hold on. Get turned you come off. here to educate us, right? To some degree. Not exactly. I just wanted to have a conversation. Right. When you're having a conversation, you're providing facts, right? Yeah. Okay, so why don't you come prepared with that? To well, I, I know the facts, and if you guys don't have to believe them, uh, the problem is but we can they say are the facts. Same thing. Yeah. We can say the same thing. We can say something. You won't believe it. You say something. We won't believe it. So how are we supposed to have an education? The things I've disputed haven't been facts. They've been anecdotes, which I've said I agree. Those are terrible, but those don't, don't outweigh what we know from the FBI, from the DOJ, etc. Okay, et but you're not showing me anything from the FBI. 
guy that backed that up. That's true. Well, you would have to look it up. I mean, it is true. Why can't you show us that? According it seems like I can't say anything right at all. I mean, anything I say, they've immediately got an answer to it. Sometimes it even contradicts something that was said previously. There's like this cycle of, you know, this bad thing happens to black people. No, this actually benefits them disproportionately. Yes, but it's because this other bad thing happens to black people, and then the cycle just kind of repeats from there. So, yeah, I didn't put in the effort to print everything out all nicely because I knew that it would just be ignored. But if you want to prove me wrong, show me that facts and logic can win, feel free to try your hand at it. <clears throat> One thing I did do, though, was toss out my uncomfortable overpriced boxers for what is quite possibly the most comfortable pair of boxers I've ever owned. I'm not tracking this empirically. I simply feel that it is true. I'm, of course, talking about Undertack, and if you haven't tried them yet, you have no idea how much better things could be for you. These aren't normal boxers. They've literally been tested by special forces. Why? It's cool. Don't ever think it. They're made with modal. It's like cotton, but better. 50% more moisture wicking. Naturally, anti microbi stuff. It's, it's softer, okay? It's sturdy. It's comfortable. Extra wide waistband. The fly design, brilliant, straightforward. It's durable. Ultra lightweight, fade resistant, shrink resistant. Here's the best part. They're almost 30% less than the competition. Visit undertack.com. That's undertack.com right now. Get 20% off site-wide with the offer code DOYLE20. Satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. You want to keep your polyester under putting chemicals in your body, lowering your testosterone, that's fine. You don't deserve this product in the first place. And if you buy it, we're going to track your address. By the way, Undertack donates a portion of its profits to veteran-run organizations that are actively fighting human trafficking, which we love. Undertack.com. That's Undertack.com. Offer code DOYLE20. Offer code DOYLE20. Very epic. We continue. <laughs> Are you feeling threatened? Do you want us to back up because you're feeling threatened? I didn't, I didn't. It's not that we feel threatened. Why are you Look, you up? let me just say, we came here to have a conversation. We're not asking you to speak with us. If you would like to, you can. But the problem is we're trying to record this to show people that we still can have conversations in this country. Maybe you think I'm like an idiot racist, which maybe I am, but at least we can talk about it. So, so, I believe, and that's why I came out here with my crew to get this on camera. So that's what we're trying to do. So if you guys... I got a real question if, before, before I interrupt you. Why are you like admitting a racist? Like, what's that gonna gain you right now? Like, I was just, you know, admitting it's a possibility. Because I don't want to. So but I'm not saying, but like, you gotta see how that looks, though. Because it's like, we already, like, right here up. Yeah. I'm not saying we gonna do nothing, but it's like, tension's already high. You gonna say you're a racist? No, like, I didn't say I was a racist. I said maybe I am because if. No. No. If there's a possibility. The point is, there's no possibility. I am the least racist person you guys have ever met. You guys have ever met. The point is, if you guys wouldn't mind just backing up a little bit so that our second camera could get the shot, I would just appreciate that. Or just, yeah, open up a crevice or something. Don't feel bad, because we're not doing it. I know you came here today, and you're very educated on this topic, or you wouldn't have come here on his side. Yes, educated on his side. Yes, on your side, you haven't come here. Obviously, we're all college students. Me, I'm a freshman, so yes, I, I do know a lot to have this conversation, but you come here with stats and stuff like that. Yeah. I woke up not not knowing this was going to happen. Today. Yeah. Do you go to like actual, since you're on a college campus, like professors and stuff who studied on this, yeah. who can actually have like this intellectual conversation that you are looking for out of these students here? Interestingly enough, every time I've reached out to professors, mm -hmm. they've denied that because they didn't want to be on camera having these conversations with Which me. Which ones did you talk to? Uh, there was one at, I think, George Washington no, University. Yeah, because I, mean, I didn't I'm talk sure to one here. Find okay, so that's really not a fair, uh, that's not fair. Yeah. Uh, I haven't talked to any at either. I'm, I'm sure you can find someone willing to Make sure you include that in the video. HBCU professors did you reach out to? Versus yeah. PWI professors? Uh, no, from either. But you just say you reached out to a professor at, at uh, George Washington University. Correct. Yeah, they asked if I've done this with professors before. That conversation was going to be about differences between male and female dynamics in the workforce, not about racial politics. But I have reached out before, but typically professors don't want to be on camera having these conversations, in my experience. That you didn't want to talk to white liberals about racism, but yeah. then you go and talk to professors at George About a female professor about sexism. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but I'm talking about We're this talking topic. This time, because you yeah. are on it, you decided to come on to HBCU today yes, to do this. But you could have gone to professors and things who Why you already have these statistics and then prepared yeah. for this. Are you willing to have that talk with the actual yeah, professor? Yeah, absolutely. The reason I chose students is because I myself am a student. Well, you, I was. Where, You're gonna. Where do you go? I dropped out of college, believe it or not. Oh. Oh. So he wants to talk to college.
energetic, educated. I wanted to talk to people my age about this. I am. 23. So you don't know something. Oh, you know? 23. Keep that in the video. Okay, yeah, I'll keep that part in if you're trying to dunk on me for not going to college right after you literally said that it's unfair because I know too much on the topic. Yeah, I will do that, actually. Why'd you choose an HBCU? So I found out, and I think you'll probably agree with this, that this is considered to be the best public HBCU in the country. And Right. Aggie Prime! So I thought that if I'm going to have a conversation with students, I should go to the best HBCU in the country, talk to students about racial politics. I think that's, like, pretty much... The right trajectory. But I feel like it would be way uh, better if you talk to professors. Uh, I came from. No, 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 let him ask him. Let him I went to a, a local community college in Michigan. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to go into poli sci. Okay. okay. Why did you drop out, if, if you don't mind me asking? I wanted to do this, which maybe is not the best improvement, but I thought it was important, so. Important for what? Do you know that it's not history well, I, I was hoping to prove that it is still possible to have conversations with people who obviously disagree extremely on things in a way that's respectful and civil. Um, I know that a lot of people think that I'm doing this to try to like get a reaction. I'm really not. Uh, I think if I were trying to do that, I'd be much more provocative and rude. Do you think, do you think if, we, if a black person went to the Capitol during the insurrection or before it when they were talking, do you think that they would have had a similar interaction? Well, there have actually been instances of Black Lives Matter protesters overtaking... I'm not talking about Black Lives Matter. I'm talking about okay. a single black person what who I, was talking to okay. a group of white people yep. near, around an issue. Do you think it'll be a similar interaction? Are you talking about January 6th? I'm confused. We're talking about how if, if there's a group of white people, for example, let's say I Imagine was 23 and, and I decided exactly what doing what you're doing yeah. as a black person going onto a white campus. Do you think we'd have the same civil interaction we're having right now? Absolutely. I think it'd actually be okay, more civil. Okay, so why, why do you think your that? purpose is saying why? doing it? Why? Why? Be more civil. Why is that? Because, yeah, why is that? because black people are savages. That's not no, what no, I said. No, no, no. I'm not saying you said that. I think, I think that white, white students, uh, they're kind of, I don't want to say nerdy. They're less, they're less violent? No, sir. So but they, they, they are, they're much more willing to just like all stand back and listen and go, ooh, that's very interesting. Whereas this tends to be a discussion where everybody wants to chime in. And so in my experience dealing with both groups, that tends to be true. Do you not think it's because we're black students and we actually are living this? Yeah. This isn't a, like, this isn't a new story to us. Yeah. My brother got his ass beat by cops in Charleston almost got killed because mm -hmm. he's black. Like, do you think maybe our reaction is different because we live this? Sure, yeah. We can't take this off when we go home. We can't dress up in a yep. suit and be You're not just wearing this in a book. Yeah. 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 Either way, this is, our skin. this is my life. Yeah, that, and that's so, why I'm here to talk about it. Please, thank you. I have a question mostly about your decision to do it today in this time. Like, there's a time and place in an audience yeah. every time you discuss anything, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that you even considered or thought about the change in reaction about doing a segment like this during Black History Month? Uh, actually, it was precisely the decision right. because and I thought that, that would because of what? You, because if I want to have a yeah, conversation about proper. racial politics and I'm planning my schedule, I thought that it would be best to do it during Black History so Month. Why not honor Black figures? Yeah, that Instead makes sense though, right? Maybe it's wrong, like, but that makes okay, sense. Also, Black History Month. Do you know Black History Month? Do you, I don't know if you didn't. Is it Black History? Black what? History black month? History month? month? Do you know what it's for? Is it Black History? I'm going to guess Black History. It's wait, about wait, celebrating I feel like trying to give how far we've come as a community, a black community. Yeah. It's about celebrating the figure. So instead of perpetuating more drama yeah. and hysteria, why don't you just choose to do a segment where you're actually informing people or having discussions about public black figures that have mm. done something, talk about what we're doing in our communities to reach racial, like, Equity. Yeah. Why don't you talk about something like that instead of starting a debate during Black History Month? Race. Black History Month is a month of celebration, not mm -hmm. sorrow. We've gotten out of our sorrow, but mm -hmm. so for some reason, white people keep trying to bring us back. back in it. We can't be happy for 28 fucking days, <laughs> the shortest month of the year. I hear differently. Uh, typically, when I talk to black students about politics or even listen to like you know the, the most prominent voices in, like I guess, black leadership, it's all very uh, opposite of that. It's not celebrating. It's all upset about the injustices committed against blacks by white well, America. We and like, well, I mean no disrespect by this, but... You you guys are here talking to me, so I'm assuming you at least have some stake in it, and if you really thought I was crazy and didn't want to talk, you could walk away. One thing I noticed is that the girl that I spoke to earlier actually changes her demeanor based on how the crowd is acting, which I guess, to be fair, most of them are doing, but, you know, she's one of our main characters, so it sticks out a little bit more. The whole talking to professors thing, too, by the way, 
oh, yeah, okay, drop the pin. Like, I'm totally down to do that. But here's the thing. If you're going to hold such radical positions with such radical implications and effects, and which are effectively indictments on me personally because I'm white, you have to be able to defend those. This isn't just like you like Pepsi, I like Coca-Cola. Your beliefs literally are moral indictments on me and my country, which if brought to fruition are going to significantly, objectively reduce my quality of life and that of my family. So yeah, if you're going to have that level of audacity, you can't just hide behind a professor. Like, I'll talk to them too, that's fine, but you can't think that you're just entitled to these positions by default as if they're self-evident, especially when, as you can see here, you can't even defend them for the most part. But that's the thing. The idea that there's even a conversation, meaning a back and forth, meaning the possibility that they are not completely correct is so offensive that it literally almost incites violence. That's why they say they're educating you. That means you just have to sit and just internalize all the information. No dialogue, no objections. You don't know better. You're white, so just be educated. And I try to extend an olive branch like, hey, maybe you guys are right. Maybe I am just some racist guy. And they're like, I knew it. You outed yourself. You will now pay. And there's like 10 times throughout this video where they make these smug little threats to us. And yes, you see this behavior with white leftists too, but ask yourself why that is. Ask yourself what black and white leftists have in common beyond just they vote for Democrats. Think about it. it makes a lot more sense. One mic, one mic, one mic, one mic. What is the title of this segment going to be called? Because I'm looking at your last video and it says angry and clueless feminists at Women's March in 2020. They were angry and clueless. You guys aren't angry and clueless. So what is your title going to be? Are you going to address this problem? Yeah, no, I'm going to I'm gonna say uh, America is not racist. Change my mind at HBCU. That will be the title. No, I would say at the HBCU. Okay, I'll say the HBCU. I will say that. If you want me to, I'll say that. Absolutely. John, what did you go yeah, to the feminist thing asking about for them to be angry and cool as you call them? Uh, I was asking them about abortion rights. Oh, See, that's what I'm saying. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. No, 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 I didn't actually. No, you did. If you you haven't watched the video, if you watch the video, you'll I'm see. Not that shit. So you, then you don't get to have an opinion that, on it. I absolutely do. Have to Whoa, wait, wait, on something you didn't watch. You get to have an opinion on that. On what? Are you not black? So you get to, do you get to have an opinion on that? Yeah. Because. You can't have an opinion on a video you didn't watch. I grew up with black people. I live with black people. I got a question. I got a question. So, yes, sir. This is John Don right? The three problems with America today are the women, my fault, the women, the Jew, and the homosexual. What do you mean by that? Damn, two Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just kidding. There was a guy. Uh, his name is Gavin McInnes. Maybe some of you are familiar. He's a comedian. He did a joke one time where he went up on stage and everyone thought he was a Nazi. And so he said that to throw him off, like some actual Nazi stuff. Okay. So I quoted his quote, and I'm assuming that's an, a hit piece about me or something. Uh, why would you quote that? So I was giving an example of what not to do. Like, no. What's your life? I just talk about politics. So what's the point? Like, what was talking what, about politics. Like, what credentials, what do you have to make you... What is your life purpose? Like, what is your goal at the end? What are you getting from this is my question. Or is it just like, what, are, what are you gaining? Not what you're making, not what your goal is. What are you gaining from this experience? Uh, I have a, an interest in politics and I like talking to no, people. So. I mean, like yeah. this specific experience. I enjoy this. But are you even, what do you enjoy about it? Yeah. 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 Typically in politics, the rule is that if you're explaining, you're losing. But I was curious to see all the different avenues they would pursue in order to avoid just addressing the idea ideas head on. So yeah, you know, they started asking about my personal life, which I don't care. I'll answer the questions, but can we just acknowledge like as if any of that matters for literally any reason, as if any of that has any pertinence to what we're talking about. And of course, they loved hearing me say, yeah, I had black friends because they think it's really funny when the people that they're accusing of treating people differently and poorly because of their skin color think that being friends with those people counters that. Crazy thought, right? And again, everything I said, there was an answer, there was an objection. I literally, I could not say anything right. This part is actually, it's pretty unproductive. It gets better shortly, but this whole thing is honestly just a great example of what these conversations are actually like. This is what we're dealing with, and it's only going to get more extreme and more vicious. Did you hang out? Where'd you go to high school? Uh, I always hang out actually with like a pretty diverse group of kids. Um, oh, what did that consist of? Can you be more specific? We had like a fat Anybody white kid. That, we had like Anybody a few black kids. Go, right? Actually, all my best friends come to think of it growing up because the neighborhood I lived in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do, do. I got a question. No, I got a question. No, I, got a question. No, I, got a question. I have a question. Go ahead. 
Why do you think your proximity to blackness equates your knowledge with black Ooh, issues? That's a good I don't think it means everything, but I think it means something. Why? I think as it, far as what? Well, I think if I were talking about it with absolutely no experience dealing with black people in my life, that would be ridiculous. Really? Maybe but if you're not going through what they do. We gotta. Let her finish. Let her finish. Yeah, right. I think at least having grown up and again, you know, it's kind of a buzzword, but I've had black friends my whole life. I think that at least oh, gives me okay. something. You know what's interesting too? If you talk to like racist people from like a hundred years ago and ask them if they have black friends, they'd be like, hell no. So like your threshold of what means racism, not a hundred years ago. Did you experience things that your black friends experienced though? Uh, I don't think they really experienced a whole lot of injustice. Did you ever ask Did you ask them yeah. that? Wait, wait, why do you think that though? Well, I mean, I was friends with them. But you weren't I, I grew up with them. So maybe that's because where they surrounded. Let's get That could be true. Did you not think about the little things? Like maybe when you guys were all in the store, they were looking at your friends and not you. Did you think about implicit things like that? When you were trying to drive them. No, they would have said something. I'm sorry. What was your answer? I'm sorry. No, they would have said something about it. No, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. My black friends? Yes, they would. No, because I'm black. I'm black. I know, because I'm black. You're talking about my friends I grew up with. I know okay, them better than you know them. So. You're white. You're white. You're white. So white. And I am black. So I would know maybe a little okay. bit more because I'm black. I've been I mean, I grew up in a very so white I, I, I I know, So this segment is. So this segment is America's not racist, right? Yes, sir. So um, how do you describe like what's it called? Like the red line and things, you know? Because a lot of our wealth, a, a lot of economics, are have meant to like putting us down. You yeah. feel me? Like. We weren't allowed to invest in actual real estate. Yep. We weren't allowed to go out and do that. So, and when we did go do it, the country took that away from us, hmm. right? So if America, so the basis on which America is founded, now I'm not saying that you are racist, one individual is racist, but I'm saying that the system that this country has been founded on, the very cornerstone is corrupt at its core. Yeah. We look at the police, we look at the police and imprisonment, like, like she was saying, we get into it, mass incarceration, right? We look into how, how, how it really goes into how it really started popping off, right? Mm -hmm. Where they start taking out of our schools, teaching us the, the skills and the jobs we need, the deindustrialization of our country, right? We, I'm a, we gonna talk about it, right? So we talk about how y'all are taking jobs away from us, from our grandparents, right? Yeah. This 70s, this 60s, 70s, right? So we get into it, we lose the job. And then it's proven fact. CIA has com uh, confirmed they've been pumping drugs into our neighborhood. And then we're going to criminalize the addiction, right? Yeah. So then, and then along with the prison system, if the prison systems ain't racist, why is it that the, in, that the privatized prison systems to gain money from the, from the government, they have to be at max capacity? Right. And so we have this. So we see police quotas where they have to go out. They're giving out the tickets. They're giving and which with the black people for the simple for the areas. simple traffic violation. We see it escalated way farther. Mm -hmm. We now see it. Exactly. For a so, stop. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and our prison system isn't based on 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 um, reformation, on, on on rehabilitation in, in, in the communities where we've had everything taken from us, where we've had everything done to us and we're merely trying to survive. That's what it comes down to. We look, y'all try to criminalize the survival of it when you've taken away everything that we've. And I'm not saying you specifically, but I'm talking about the people in power, where they've taken away our job, where they've introduced this addiction, where to feed my family, I got two choices. I got two choices. I can either go hustle this, or I can smoke it, because I can't feed my family, mm -hmm. right? So then we gonna criminalize addiction, which we now see reaches out to white people a lot. We see the pill epidemic, right? Yeah, but the difference is when it was in black communities, y'all over policed those communities yes. and arrested everybody. But when white kids started doing pills, it was the opium epidemic, and now we have to fix the pharmaceutical companies. There we go. There we go. There's a difference between fixing it, but they don't only solve white areas. Yeah. Yeah. Mind if I respond to that? Never. Go ahead. So, yeah, hold on. They get a little aggressive for my man. You work here. So this part was interesting. Some faculty member at the university comes over and picks up the box that we had behind us and tries to take a picture of the shipping label so we can get our names and addresses. And so we get into this back and forth with him because there's absolutely no innocent reason to be doing that. Like if you wanna know who we are, just ask. We're within our rights to be here. Uh, at that point, it hadn't gotten too crazy. So it's extremely bizarre that this guy would just come up from behind us and try to start going through our stuff to find out our personal information. But the funniest part about this which the guys in the HOC Discord will appreciate, is that since we filmed this at North Carolina Agricultural and Technological University, we ship the stuff to our guy who lives in North Carolina. And that also happens to be the guy that everyone on the Discord server routinely doxes as a meme, like in school presentations, bathroom stalls. So 
Even in this guy's best efforts to expose our operation, he recovers virtually no new information. But even then, it just goes to show the type of people working at these places. Like, I'm trying to talk to black students about race in America. Some white faculty member starts trying to take photographs of our private information for God knows what purpose. Just very unsettling behavior. Uh, one second, I'm going to talk to this gentleman here. We're going to try to restore the uh, format here. I'm a maintained position. Call him, big bro. Call him. Call him, big bro. What's your name, sir? Devonta. John, nice to meet you. So you mentioned a lot of things. I think the first one you mentioned was redlining. If you don't mind, I'm probably going to ask you to repeat just because we had a slight, what I believe is an interruption. So with redlining, what I think is interesting, if you look at like the economic markers in the neighborhoods that were, you know, said you can't loan or these are high risk areas to loan. When you take all of those economic markers into account and look at just purely by the race of the neighborhoods, what you find is that it's not actually that significantly different between white neighborhoods or black neighborhoods. Also, if you look even of the neighborhoods that were redlined in the first place, 85% of the inhabitants of those neighborhoods were white. And while those programs continued by I think the 1940s, disproportionately black Americans were actually receiving those loans. And so I don't think that I don't think that it's I don't think it's 85 percent. On average, on average, like throughout the whole country. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I just I, I don't think it's fair to you know point the finger at that one policy and say that that's responsible for the reason that like black Americans today don't have wealth. And I think you also mentioned generational wealth. Uh, can, I, can, I, yeah. can I respond yeah. to that though? So my thing is, I'm not saying that it, with redlining that they, they couldn't go and get the property. What I'm saying is these, back when we were trying to move out of these spots, mm -hmm. where we they weren't giving us, they weren't allowing us to go out and, and move into nicer properties. These properties that the city under neglected, you feel me, where you see, are and over policed I should say, mm -hmm. where you see that we are, our resources, our roads aren't being paved correctly. Um, what's it called? Our our, our 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 structures around us aren't being taken care of, mm -hmm. and then we're and then on top of our schools are, are being underfunded. We aren't getting the same as we aren't getting the same opportunity to, to prosper. And I and I'm not saying that everyone should have the same thing. What I'm saying is we should all have the same opportunity yeah. to, to 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 grow and to, to succeed. But when when you see continuously in our schools where they're not allowing that, where where our, where our communities are being over policed, where we're being where, where and you and you can look this up mm -hmm. where the cops are trained to treat us like targets and treating us as enemies rather than members of our own community mm -hmm. when you when, when, when you when you go into that when 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 the people policing us one aren't from our neighborhoods where they don't know us they don't know the dynamics of our people but you got them coming in and now we're treated as enemies yeah you see it and then when we're not allowed to move out of them spaces because it wasn't just as simple as oh yeah and i agree that there were a lot of poor white people but that's where they get it messed up though mm -hmm. is that we were all poor but the thing is black people were meant to kept were meant to be kept poor those poor white people if they were to go out and try to do it they could mm -hmm. whereas we were instantly we were denied not based off of not based off of the money we had not based off of of any record that we have was purely off the color of our skin mm -hmm. um i want to talk about the generational wealth thing because i think a lot of what the discussion is getting to is pivoting to this idea of like the historical injustices. I want to talk about like contemporary America, which as you mentioned, we can't talk about the present if we can't talk about the past. So I think the question becomes, is the reason that black Americans have not been able to accumulate generational wealth because of those policies that you mentioned? I would argue that that's not the reason. I think that uh, if you look at how black Americans actually spend money when they have it, even if you can, even if, even if you control for income. So if you take a white person, a black person making the same amount of money, for whatever reason, white people are more likely to save that money less likely to spend it on fancy cars costume jewelry things like that i don't think that's true either because if you look i totally agree if you look at like the education that he mentioned too we mentioned this earlier that per pupil white students actually receive one percent less funding than black students the problem with black no it's true the problem with black schools is that they're in districts like you mentioned that aren't receiving funding from the tax revenue because businesses don't like to invest in those communities because for whatever reason they're violent you think that they're over policed i think that they're probably under policed i think the only way to re uh, retain some type of law and order to where businesses would want to come into the community invest know that they're not going to get robbed they're not going to get their stores looted or something like that would be to have more police, a safer community that would bring that economic investment. And if you look at like the home ownership rate, even the unemployment rate, when this America, when America was like most racist, I guess, you know, uh, post-slavery, pre-Jim Crow, the white unemployment rate and the black unemployment rate were pretty much the same. The white ho home ownership rate and the black home ownership rate were much closer than they are now. So for some reason, as this country has become less racist in terms of the laws, those gaps between white and black people have gotten wider. And I just don't understand how that's possible. All right, so you said, um, and I just, I just want to 
make sure I'm getting this right. You said after yes, slavery, the amount of poor white people and the poor black people were about the same, right? Not the same. Um, so if you look at the unemployment rate, they were pretty much the same. And so what we've seen since then is the black unemployment rate has gone up and the white unemployment rate has pretty much stayed the same. Uh, the home ownership rate as well. The home ownership rate for black Americans was much higher prior to the 1960s than it is now. And I just don't understand how that could be because since the 1960s, we've gotten rid of things like, you know, discriminatory laws, redlining. Uh, we even have incentive programs to give specifically black home buyers loans, things like that. But then why hasn't it undone it? It hasn't actually gotten better yet. It's a process. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you when you talking about when we talking about slavery, like that was like 300 years. We we ain't even went past that yet. You know what I'm saying? It's a process. And let's let's get something right about the unemployment. Yeah. We see the unemployment rate back when slavery ended was about the same between black people and white people, and we're seeing the black unemployment go up. Why? Because we were used as free labor. So when we're no longer allowed to be used as free labor, who are y'all going? Who, who do they go hire? They go hire the poor white people True. because rather than give that black man who who you didn't have to pay nothing a chance to work y'all gonna instead hire the, not y'all but they gonna instead hire out to those who look like them now because it's no longer i can't profit off of you so instead i'm gonna try i'm, I'm gonna support my own community and to an extent i agree we as black people around the 60s or after we after discriminatory things like not allowing us to go eat in certain plot spots or those places we would go spend our money with them afterwards rather than support our own communities i can yeah. agree with that but the thing is we look at it let her talk. Hold on, she has talk about Black Wall Street. Go. Talk about it. Yeah, talk <laughs> about it. Let me say when we did build that, build that wealth, because we did, and you burnt that down. Not you, but you know Yo, what I mean. Your ancestors. Uh -huh. that's so that's we have, you know, built that wealth and stuff. But each time we do that, you burn it down. Can you remind me of which city that was in? Like this? Yeah, Roseville, Tulsa, yeah. yeah. Manhattan, yeah. Central Park used to be a thriving black neighborhood before they kicked us out and make yeah, no. and then we see that same thing when when people when they tried to build schools for black people they had burned those down as well yeah when we tried to do that the content doesn't stop i guess um i think with the the black wall street thing if i if i recall the story correctly and i know that this isn't often written about in the history books there was a riot that popped off the riot no, 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 that wasn't coming from because of our economic prosperity it's because of our economic prosperity they felt threatened and they felt that we were starting to do better and so instead and they came up with some arbitrary reason i couldn't remember it but they, but they used that reason to come in and destroy everything that we had when was Black Wall Street? That was in the early no, 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 no. 30s. Okay. So basically, wait, wait. what happened? There was a situation. I think it was like at a bakery or something. A white woman accused a black man of whistling at her, right? So she goes back, she tells her neighborhood. They use. No, that's not. Well, the same thing happened to him, but it was a different situation in Tulsa. So she goes back, tells all the white men, whatever. You know, white women tears are like fucking like powerful for some reason anyway anyway all these white people come to this neighborhood to find that guy they burn down houses they set up burning cross they destroy stores they start looting all of the stuff that we say happens in black communities happens mainly because black people are doing it white people were doing it to yeah. tulsa and then for some reason the american government gets involved they damn near bomb strike the entire fucking city and then it's all gone Okay. Bla fucking Black Wall Street is just gone yep. forever. Yeah, the only time, so the only time America has ever bombed anything on its own country has been black communities. It's never been a white community being bombed. Well, that's not racist. Um, well, the thing with the planes, those weren't like military planes. Those were like, because farmers, like the, for the agrarian process, they would have airplanes. They were flying over and basically like, hey, that's where they are. They weren't like dropping these big bombs and just like destroying but the community. They, but they did fire bombs. But let's say, let's say, so let's say, let's say that happened. What what year was that? 
That was like, right? So, but it's been 60 years. We bombed Nagasaki and Hiroshima in the 1940s. They are now very prosperous cities. But, but we, but we're not gonna act like eight, that bombing them should intrinsically make them prosperous. No, ma'am. I am wondering. I'm simply wondering. Bombs, Pearl Harbor, but I want to give an audience, but Japanese Americans had this conversation. No, 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 no,
Hey, chill, cuz. Don't cut the conversation. Don't cut the property, cuz. I'm not touching you. No, get away, bro. Get away, bro. Let him rock. We trying to conduct the conversation. Let him rock, cuz he's saying some smart shit. He talking, he talking, bro. We got the lawyer. Yeah, we got the lawyer out here to get them out of the way. Why not have them? Listen, it's a conversation. It's a conversation. No we don't got to. They got permission to. Right. There's no need for that. Y'all resorting to anger instead of actually just sitting down and be We trying to have a productive conversation. If you guys don't like it, why don't you just walk away? I can't talk. Just like you don't Because. But, but I, this video is going to spread out. And, and, and for the slight chance that my point is put on their channel, Someone watching it might else. Someone else might be. Exactly. Okay, he might have a good open. point. That's it. I'm not gonna be able to make that change. And all it takes is a seat for someone to be like, you know what? He was speaking a good point. Let me go look into it. Let me go. Let me go research. But how are you gonna edit this? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna put it. 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 I'm how racism in America isn't as bad in, 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 in America as it used to be. But I'm confused because the uh, majority population is saying this is the same. Oh, so the lawyer wanted to see their banner by the way. Oh, over and over and over again. Why don't you want to actually get into what they're saying? You're not going to have a majority population. They're taking our property. Because they want to make sure that people are over here. If you have any concerns, if it's a That's fine. If the conversation was that important to them, why is it so important to you that you want to take time to shut it down? Mockery of my colleagues right now. No, I'm not. Like, hey, 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 of Detroit, which is this idea that Detroit was completely dependent upon the auto industry, and then when that left, that's when it collapsed and it never recovered. I've heard this before, uh, and it's like the common narrative. It's just not accurate. I mean, these companies were already moving factories into the suburbs in the 1940s because they needed more space, among other reasons, uh, union drama, etc. That car in my intro, by the way, that's actually Walter Ruther's car. You can catch the writing on the door if you look closely. But anyways, Detroit maintained its standard of living. It was still Detroit, um, even during this. Like People still lived there. But after the riots in 19 67, where over 40 people were killed and something like 1,500 buildings were burned down in five days. That's when the white flight occurs. And then comes the lack of tax revenue, poor political leadership, crime, lack of investment, etc. Why was there a riot, though? Because police raided an illegal nightclub and black people in Detroit got angry and started throwing bottles at the police. Pretty soon there's a full-on riot. Buildings are being looted. It's the same stuff that goes on now. It's all the same. Nothing ever changes. Even the debates that we're having in this video have been going on for 70 years with little to no problem progress or change. So now they're blocking the cameras. They're trying to shut it down. Speaking, by the way, of alternate history, the Tulsa riot and Black Wall Street, the narrative is, as they described, about 100 years ago in Tulsa, a white woman lied about being harassed by a black man. And so white people burned down Black Wall Street and murdered a bunch of black people. Google calls it a white supremacist terrorist massacre. What actually happened is some interaction between a black man and a white woman in an elevator that causes her to run away screaming. Who knows what that is? We don't know. We don't know what she told police, but a store clerk who rushed to the scene claimed that it was an attempted rape. Okay, so this guy has the charges dropped uh, on him a few months later. The police are still guarding him in the meantime from all the angry white people who were reportedly unarmed for the most part, actually. And eventually, this group of white people is confronted by several armed groups of black people, and a fight breaks out, which leaves two black people dead and 10 white people dead. So the story you hear now is that the white people overcome this, and they go on this rampage just slaughtering black people. Uh, but all accounts say that that's actually not what happened and that black people retreated to the neighborhoods in Greenwood. They built these fortifications. There were even black snipers who were firing at any white person they saw. Now it's like full on urban warfare, race riot. This continues. Buildings are destroyed. They're turned into fortresses. There's no military planes involved at all, by the way, let alone like dropping bombs on people. The official report in 2001 said that while they can't prove that civilians and like crop dusters weren't dropping incendiary devices, it's more likely they were just dropping messages to alert authorities instead of 
like actual bombs on people's houses, which is what these students just said. They also, they claim that there's like hundreds of people that died. There were mass graves. None of these have ever been discovered and all like 39 people died. 13 were white and 26 were black. So yeah, tragic events, terrible that it happened, but it's not even remotely close to the way that they describe it. And they describe it that way to justify the grievances that they have against white people and against America. But my favorite part is when this girl shows up and announces that we have to leave because she's brought the campus lawyer, who I'm assuming is just some girl majoring in pre-law. And she's going to kick us out because she knows the rules. You know, like it's an old Western town or something. We've got the blacksmith, we got the barber, the grocer, and we got the campus lawyer. Ah, yes, sir, the lawman's here. You'll be leaving now. <laughs> Yes, sir. No organization. I'm independent. Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you have hobbies aside from harassing black students? I'm not harassing anybody. I'm sitting here, and you choose to come up here. Sorry. We don't need to talk to him. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm out. I'm here because I have a campus lawyer here. Right. Hey, more boys. More boys. Listen. Would you like to? Yeah. I'm totally within my rights. Right. But they're violating policy. No, we're not, actually. We're not violating policy. We're not violating policy. All right, one voice. One voice. One voice. One voice. Okay, I'm gonna just say this and then get bounced. All right, so the conversation was America is not racist. Tell me why. We okay. got that. We can go. Okay, I mean, you know counter the counterintelligence program, do you? No, sir. But um, the FBI. It's an FBI. Hey, listen, y'all. A spin game. Listen, listen. Hey, one voice, one sound. Counterintelligence program was put in by J. Edgar Hoover in the FBI in the 1960s. Literally. Uh, the government document, number one, to stop the rise of a black messiah. Number two, to stop black people from coming together. That's an official document in the FBI. So you can't tell me that the uh, America's not racist when, come on, it's in the FBI. It's really, really, really the government. Up until the 90s. Oh, no, it's still going on. It's still going on. Hey, after that, I'm out. I love y'all, please. I don't know about y'all, but you gotta talk. Come on, man. What is this? Let's say the Constitution. Yeah. No, I, I think that it just acknowledges that America used to be a great country and it's not anymore. And it just wants to be made great again. But that's racist. Make America great again is bad because how is America ever great? How is America ever great? What did America ever stand for other than racism? Excellence. What was excellent about America? We invented the modern world. Who is we? Okay, who is America. We? America. What's your name? Travis. What's John. John. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. I see you're saying, like, you know what I'm saying, sir? Well, uh, I kind of just want to know, like, I kind of want to see your stance on it before. You know what I'm saying? Because I am interested in talking to you. I'm not here to know. Yeah, he pretty sure. I just want to know you're right. Why are you pretty sure? How are you pretty sure? So what's really, like, what makes you think that America is not racist? But speaking from, you know, a white... Male yeah. or not, what do you what makes you think America is not racist? Because me being a black male, you know, our point of view is our size are two different things. You know what I'm saying? So what makes you say that? That's what I'm very curious. So what makes you say that? One second, if you don't mind. I'll answer your question. So now it's reached its ultimate form. You know, they couldn't argue with me. I was immune to their ace in the hole, to the campus lawyer. So now they're just trying to shut us down so we can't keep having the conversations, which were actually pretty reasonable and productive for the most part. So they keep doing this. And then there's a part where one of them tried to like come up from behind where we were. And one of our security guards, who were all licensed professionals, blocked him from doing so. And then it became, he pushed him, he assaulted him. And that kind of stuff just, it rings a big bell. Um, well, I guess to answer your question, I think that things exist in a default state of like not being racist. And I just don't see evidence that America as a country, as a people are racist. And so I've been out here trying to, sorry about that. Thank you very much for coming.
Come yeah, on, sing them out. So, um, I just, you know, we talked about things like slavery. We talked about things. No, we're not. You can't take our property, actually. You're making your students look so bad right now. We were trying to have productive conversation. You are making us look bad. You don't have the authority to do that. We are within our rights. You're on our public property. No, it's all of our public property. Just because we don't go here doesn't mean it's not ours. Doesn't matter. We are within our rights to be here. You are interrupting that for no reason. What? What? Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. So, we talked about things like slavery, generational wealth, police, and we traded statistics, and it's kind of gotten to a point where a lot of people decided instead of sitting down and talking, they would rather just shut down the conversation as a whole, which is unfortunate because the whole point was to try to show we can still have conversations in this country. So it's like, I look, I look right I don't know the facts. I don't know sensations. Like you might have. I'm not gonna bring out some point that such and such happened. Such and such. I'm just speaking my mind. Past experience. I know growing up as a black male, especially tall black male, some people can see me as violent when I know in my true nature that's not my intention or that's not who I am. You know what I'm saying? I can't just be walking. I can't just be walking doing no more stroll. Well, because my hearing, some people might feel threatened. By me. Yeah. Well, all the time I'm just trying to get class. I'm trying to have a. Yeah. Right there. I mean, right there. I want to get his. Hey, don't worry about them. If you don't want to be entertainment or not, if you don't want to be entertainment, stay here. If you want to be entertainment, stay here. They really give you content. Why are we going to be entertainment? What are we arguing? Turn the cameras off. So then this female police officer shows up, and right before that, you can hear the guy I was talking to say something like, wow. They really just won't let you talk or something like that. And it's like, yeah, but anyway, she tells me that it's time to pack up and that I have to leave the area. I know that I don't technically have to, but I'm not about to get into that with a black female police officer who already thinks I'm racist. Like, yeah, no thing. I think I will go ahead and not do that, actually. So I go and talk to these other police officers who responded and everybody starts singing with joy that they caused a big enough scene to warrant police presence in order to prevent us from asking people to just explain to us why America is not racist. Maybe another time. Maybe another time. I wish I had a conversation with you, Rob. I'm like, thank you. I appreciate it. What's your name? John, nice to meet you. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. It's John Doyle. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. You pushed one of our students. The, the revolution no, will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. Hey, hey, ho, ho, these racist people has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, these racist people has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, these racist people has got to go. We didn't actually do anything though. Um, Still do it. Do it. Do it. We are not causing the disturbance. The disturbance is being caused by their reaction to our polite conversation. So. Yeah. Yes. Look at you. Yeah. You're making a fool of yourself. Yes, sir. The police here are very careful with the words they're using. I almost respect the craftsmanship of it because, look, I get it. They have a job to do. And while it is true that I'm completely within my rights to be there, even in spite of the way the students have chosen to react, I understand that their job would be easier if I simply just packed it up and left. And I also understand that at that point, it's probably unlikely that this crowd's going to leave us alone and let us do what we came to do anyways. So he mentions that if we want to be here, we have to go through the event center and register. And that is a thing that can happen, but it's not required. That would be like for an official campus event, which they would then have a greater obligation to maintain order for. But legally and according to campus policy, we're allowed to be there so long as we're not behaving in a way that is reasonably understood to incite violence or disorder. And I told the students a hundred times, it'd be a different story if I were there with my megaphone and I'm yelling at people, I'm being disrespectful, et cetera, et cetera. 
cetera. But I was there with a sign and a table just inviting people to talk to me. They chose to react the way that they did, but I'm not reasonably responsible for that. But as the officers even say here, you know where you are, right? Which mirrors language that we heard throughout the video from students basically saying something to the effect of like, do you think this is a good idea for you to be here doing this? Which is meant as a threat. It's them basically saying that they understand that people on the campus, for whatever reason, are more likely to want to resort to violence over something like this. And there's not a whole lot that we can do about that. So that's why they don't explicitly say, we're asking you to leave. And if you don't, you will be trespassed. Instead, they say, we would like for you to leave. And if not, we may have to just take things in another direction. Uh, and so at that point, there's really no point in staying. Like, I'm not trying to cause headaches. I'm really not. Because if I wanted to be that guy, I could say, no, sorry, officer, we're within our rights to be here. Please restore order to your campus. Okay, well, now they have to call in a big police presence. The whole crowd is still going to be shutting us down anyways. So instead, as my last gesture of dissent against the students, I decided to cooperate with law enforcement. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Next time, you got to go through the event center mm -hmm. if you want to be here. Mm -hmm. Right now, this is becoming a hazard to everyone. Do you agree? Do Respectfully, you agree? I disagree. You don't. You, do, you disagree. Do you mind if I give my go opinion ahead, and ahead. then? Um, I think that we have a table set up, and for about okay. an hour and a half, we had a really productive discussion, right, right. and people are kind of getting aggravated, which is understandable, so, but I don't think we're causing that. But, but again, understand where you are. Yeah. yeah. I'm not telling you you cannot exercise your right. Yes, sir. We would like for you to leave at this point. You have not registered. Mm -hmm. You have not registered. Mm -hmm. And we have proof that you haven't registered our contact with the mm -hmm. event center. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and pack it up, if you don't mind. Or we might have to take other steps. And I don't want to take other steps. I appreciate that. Okay. We'll leave. Okay. Okay. If I could ask a favor or at least okay. your input. Okay. Do you think it might be worth it if you guys just asked the students to maybe just like let us have our conversation? Do you think that would work at all? I, I think yeah, they would listen to you more than me. Yeah, you have your rights to talk. I'm, they have they, their rights to they, talk they, too. They, they, they won't listen to us. That's true. But they don't have a right to cause a hazard, do they? They don't. They don't. They don't. We don't. We, I, I really want you guys yeah. to do the right thing. Yes, sir. Signing up if you want to come out and have this event. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were one of the ones that received the letter but you gotta go through the proper pro yeah. process. So can we pack it up today? You can have my car, you call me. Let's set up this thing next time, Okay. Right? Thankfully, we'd actually gotten a lot of really good footage. There were people who were being respectful and who were interested in engaging with us and talking about these things. So to those people, thank you. Maybe we can do this again sometime. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more content like this. But yeah, at this point, we pretty much just decided to pack it up. So we would like for you to leave. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. I don't know what you're gonna say. Oh, I'm a purist. You didn't even fully end racism. I was like so close. I was this close. And then the administration, the, the police officers, all these people were like, no, he can't end racism. Then we'll have nothing to complain about. And so they came and they had to shut down the event. I'm so angry about that. I almost threw up. I almost threw up. I was so angry about that. But anyways, I mean, look, we wanted to go on college campus. We wanted to have a conversation. Black History Month, we wanted to say, look, America's not racist. American people aren't racist. Our history is not exceptionally racist. Our institutions are not racist. And I'm tired of pretending that's not the case. And frankly, I'm tired of being told that just by virtue of me being white, I am somehow responsible for the state of black America. That's not true. It's, it's counterproductive. It's actually harmful to spread those lies. And so I said, look, we're going to go on the college campus. We're going to have this discussion. The result of that discussion was after some productive dialogue, we did have some good conversations, but then once the crowd gathered, they decided that they're going to become agitated, they're going to become hysterical, simply because we had a sign and we were asking them to have a conversation with us. I told them I would understand if I had my megaphone, I was trying to start a big problem, I was saying very inflammatory things, we had a sign, we had a table, come talk with us. So once again, I, as a white man, am responsible for the behavior of black students simply because I wanted to have a conversation. I am somehow responsible for their, frankly, hysterically emotional reaction to what was a very simple premise. We were inviting them to have a conversation. We were very polite, very respectful. We took it seriously. And a lot of the students actually were angry at the mob for not wanting to have that conversation. We see this at, uh, I guess, towards the end of the video. We're trying to have a conversation. They're drowning it out with sound. They're telling the police officers that we're assaulting them. That's obviously not true. Vice versa is actually what occurred 
And we see this so much in American politics. Like, look, I'm not the guy who's going to tell you that we're going to get black people to vote for Republicans. I'm not that guy. However, it is interesting how when there are black students who want to have these conversations, even if they disagree, they want to be respectful, all of a sudden you've got this big mob who's like, nope, you're not allowed to. That's what he wants. Don't let the white man win. We went back there to try and get more footage, and we're literally told that we have to leave because we're white. We're invading a black space. And they, you know, formed the crowd. We had to leave. So it's, uh, you know... Could have gone better. Maybe probably even this is best case scenario. I don't know. I don't think it's because they didn't want to debate this issue. I don't think that. I think it's because they didn't want to debate a black person expert on the issue. I'll get that last half. I'm halfway there. 50% of racism that's left? I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Okay, that's my outro. So yeah, we left campus. We were followed out to our cars, actually, by some of the students who were on the phone with each other, keeping each other updated on our whereabouts. They were trying to get our license plates. And of course, you saw the resultant backlash uh, that followed on social media in the beginning of this video. So I think what ended up happening is exactly what our problem was in the beginning, which is that we are taught as white people that we are somehow responsible, even if we don't even realize it or participate directly in it, we're responsible for the behavior of black Americans and the resultant outcomes of those behaviors. And this is reflected by us trying to have a respectful conversation and then being asked to leave because the students can't help but become hysterically emotional and threaten us with violence. It is what it is. You know, I would have liked to have gone deeper with a lot of these topics. It seems like right when we would start to make some ground, make some progress on a topic, somebody would pivot or somebody would jump in and say something else and then we'd be on to the next thing. But, you know, if you're interested, I have done deeper explanations of a lot of these things before on my channel. So you can always check out uh, those videos as well. And for what it's worth to anyone watching to whom this applies, I'm glad you got to run your mouth on Twitter and Instagram about what you would have done if you would, if you had been there. Oh, I just would have gotten that. And you, you know what? The reality is I walked onto your campus with a handful of guys and you didn't do anything. I was by myself and the best you could do after forming a mob of like 50 people was jump around to a bunch of different arguments, pivot, tell me I'm not being fair because I know too much. And then you call the police who couldn't even make me leave. But by that point, it was clear to me that I was far too optimistic with the results of my Google search. And so I chose to leave. So to those whom I spoke, uh, to respectfully, you know, thank you. I appreciate you sincerely. I wish you the best. And I hope you understand why I have to see the behavior of your classmates for what it is. So if my tone is bitter right now, it's because this is different than just like liberals not wanting to hear me out because I'm conservative. No, it's because I'm white. I was told that a hundred times. I'm not one of these people who's going to like roll over and, you know, pretend it's about politics and call out the hypocrisy. No, you're just anti-white. You'll spend the rest of your life miserable and think it's the fault of white people. You shouldn't do that. And look, I don't think black people are going anywhere anytime soon. And white people are also are not going anywhere anytime soon. So if you want to have these conversations, we can speak openly and respectfully and perhaps both walk away with a different point of view. But if you want me to sit there and just like listen to your ethnic revenge fantasies, I'm not going to roll over like you're probably used to. I'm just going to tell you to go fuck yourself. They told me the opposite. But the reality is that I could go to the whitest college campus in the country and have a black guy sit down in front of a sign that says all white people are evil. And I would capture a reaction that is 100 times more civil than what was captured here. Oh, well, John, what'd you expect to happen? I expect to be able to talk to people. My claim is controversial. What about what they're claiming? I'm not even making a claim per se. I'm just saying that their moral indictment of white people and of America is BS. And if we've reached a state where objection to those ideas is, is a path to a death sentence, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have an answer. It was a long video. It was a movie. The ending is interpretive. Feel free to draw your own conclusions. I tried to cut as little out as possible, try to preserve the integrity of the discussion. So if you're still here, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. We've all grown.